formula is a squared plus b squared, but. Um, all right, so for this problem, we want to evaluate sine of t, cosine of t, and tangent of t. A couple things we need to know, though, first is we need to determine where is this point 11 pi over 6. And this is like one of the most crucial points that you guys need to do as far as on a unit circle. You need to know where this point is. Uh, we know that you know these have these coordinate points, but this is in radians. So then we need to remember, well, on a unit circle, what is radians dealing with? Well, remember our radius is 1. So a radian is our radius wrapped around the circle. We have like 1, you know, 2, 3. So that would be 3 radians. So at this point, we said this is what we call 3.14159, or we would call pi radians. And then if I was to go around again, I'm just going to kind of raise this here, we're at 2 pi. Right? That's 2 pi radians. This would be 1 radian, 2 radians, 3 radians, and then all the way around, halfway around, would be 3.14 radians, which we just label as pi. So this one says they wanted to determine us in 11 pi over 6. So um, when doing 11 pi over 6, what I like to do for these types of problems is I want to cut. Remember guys, if this is 11 pi over 6, I could say that 6 pi over 6 is the same thing as pi, right? Because 6 divided by 6 is still pi, is 1, 1 times pi is pi. So when I'm solving one of these problems, I like to always take my ratio, what my denominator is and rewrite pi with that denominator. So if this is 6 over 6, what I'm going to want to do is now separate, I'm going to want to like cut out my, uh, my unit circle into 6. So I'm just going to kind of forget about the radians here for a second. And let's break this up into 6. And I know I'm not going to be perfect. So therefore, this would be 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, and that's 6 pi over 6. Does everybody see that? And then so obviously you can go 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Well, is 12 pi over 6 the same as 2 pi? Yes, it is, right? So they're asking, where is 11 pi over 6? Well, that's going to be this point right here. Okay? That's step number one. You guys have to know how to determine where they're. The easiest way to do it is to section off your unit circle and do what your denominator is. Done. And also make sure it's the positive direction. That's why I went this way. If it was negative, we would have gone in that way. Um, the next thing is we need to determine what is the coordinate point. Well, by using our unit circle, all right, we know that this point is square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. All right? So then if you guys kind of notice, are these two points are kind of a reflection of each other, aren't they? Right? And you can kind of take this point, reflect it over your x-axis, and you get to this point. Does everybody see that? So what is the only thing changed? The x value is still not going to change. Looks like the x value is the exact same point. But the y value is now going to change. And it's going to become, instead of a positive, it should become a negative. negative. So this point is square root of 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half. Does everybody see that? OK. So that's step number two, is finding your coordinate, finding your coordinate point. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to evaluate sine of t, cosine of t, and tan of t. Well, a couple things you guys need to remember. Sine of t is equal to y, the y coordinate of your point, t. So my y coordinate of my point here is negative 1 half. And cosine, and actually my t also, we can evaluate this. We can also say this is going to be a little 11 pi over 6, right? Because you know that sine of t equals y. So cosine of 11 pi over 6 is equal to the x, which is root 3 over 2. Because cosine of t is equal to the x coordinate. And tangent, this one's going to get fun here. Tangent is going to be your y over x when x cannot equal 0. 
So tangent of 11 pi over 6 is equal to my y, which is a negative 1 half, divided by root 3 divided by 2. Okay. Isn't the cosine supposed to be radical 2 or 3? Um, no, I think you might get confused with 4. I think on the units on the unit circle it's radical 3 over 2, but the uh, but for ra um, pi over 4, it's square root of 2 over 2. Is that what you're looking at it? Uh -uh. Did I have it right? I don't know, I'm looking at the figure 4.21 where it's cut up into like 6. But it's everything, it's always radical 3. So it's going to be negative 10 times. This is, that's root of 1 fourth. That's a different one. I'll go over one of those. But that's a different, that's a different angle where it's the radical 2 over 2. That's a different angle from this one. So that's going to be negative half times 2 by root 3. Okay, well what we're going to have to do here is yeah. now I see I can't have a fraction on my, as my denominator. So I'm going to have to rationalize my denominator, Paul. Paul. You have to rationalize your denominator. So to do that, well, I need to multiply by my reciprocal. So I multiply my reciprocal on both sides. All right. Well, here, that cancels the 1. So I'm just left with a negative. Um, negative 1 times 2 is a negative 2 over 2 radical 3. All right. Well, obviously, these two will cancel out. So I'm left with a negative 1 over radical 3. Well, again, you can't have a radical on the bottom. So now you need to rationalize denominator by multiplying by square root of 3 over 3. So therefore I'm left with a negative radical 3 over 3. Yes, it is a lot of work, but guess what? The more and more you do of this, the more and more you can kind of like start seeing it and skipping these, all these little steps and just, you know, you'll know exactly what it's going to look like and you can move forward. But for right now, guys, you're really going to have to get practice on really going through all the steps to make sure you do it. But that's how you find uh, or evaluate the trigonometric uh, functions when given at point T, 11 pi over 6.